Hi, this is Johnny Shannon from Geospatial Insight, and I'm here again with a not quite such a quick tip. Um, this time we'll be having a look at how we can get data into Hexagon's Map Enterprise suite of software, and how we can produce a dashboard that a user can interrogate, slice and dice the data, and get useful information from it. Um, this video is going to be in two parts. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can get the data in and format, the, format it correctly so we can use it within the feature analyzer uh, part of Map Enterprise. And in the second video, I'm going to show how we can style and produce useful widgets within the dashboard. Um, the data we're going to be using is this. It's the Renewable Energy Planning Database. It's uh, freely available. Um, and uh, we've used it before. It's an interesting data set uh, showing uh, the renewables uh, infrastructure uh, within the United Kingdom. Um, we can download it as a spreadsheet and here it is downloaded. Um, we need to do a little bit of work um, on it first to clear out data that we're not really interested in, make it a reasonable size. And also we have to format the column headings, which will become the uh, fields, the attributes, um, make sure there's no gaps, make sure it's all lowercase because this is going into a Postgres uh, database and Postgres does not like gaps or uppercase or mixed case or brackets or anything like that. So um, there's a little bit of cleaning that we can do in Excel to that. And so then we can turn it into a, a CSV and uh, then convert that to a shape file uh, in Imagine. And uh, yeah, so now we've got a, um, a database which is looking good. It's got all the attributes that we want in it. Uh, crucially, it's got the X and Y values for the OSGB coordinates. And so, uh, yeah, we can convert this to a shapefile and then that's good to go into uh, the Postgres database. Um, you can upload it using the method of your choice, um, use PostGIS. Um, and then once it's in, we can have a look at that in uh, the Map Enterprise uh, uh, software itself. So we use uh, Map Enterprise on uh, Google Cloud. Um, it runs on your own server if you want to, or on Azure or AWS, whatever you like. Um, and the first thing you want to do is to import the data. And so we go to Vector Data and create new, and we can connect to the database we want to use. And then I can search for uh, the data set that we want to use. Uh, that's fine as a name. You can change the name if you want. We'll put caching on because uh, it's uh, not going to be changing. The EPSG is currently in uh, OSGB. More about that later. And then we can import it. Um, then we want to create a vector set. Um, the feature analyzer uh, it can use other data sources. In fact, you can use locally sourced uh, shapefiles for they're not too large. You can upload straight away. Um, but uh, for optimal performance, we create a vector set and uh, that will um, enable us to firstly um, set the PSG to the correct uh, projection. And secondly, um, it provides super fast caching and um, it will enable us to uh, view the data really, really quickly. So I'm going to call this um, 2022 uh, vector set, and we can click on save. Oh, and I didn't set the EPSG, so that is going to go to Web Mercator. Uh, Feature Analyzer works in 2D and 3D, um, and so uh, uh, that's why the uh, 3857 um, is a good one to use. We can publish that now and that will create uh, the cached layers and that will make it uh, much more, uh, it'll display much more quickly uh, when we come to uh, look at the, uh, the data on the screen. And there we go, it's published and we can go back to content. Um, so we loaded the vector data, we created a vector set. Um, as you can see here, there's a whole heap of other uh, data that we can bring in or publish uh, from Map Enterprise. Um, we're not going to really be concerned with that. Um, we could create uh, styles for the data, but we'll actually be creating styles within Feature Analyzer. So the only thing here we want to do is go to Legends and create a legend. And I'm going to call this REPD22 legend 
and then we can drag and drop the data sets that we want in here. And I'm just going to do two, which is the, uh, oh, let's go to the vector sets and go to the RIPD vector set. And then we go back to data sets. Then we can add in OpenStreetMap as a base layer as well. And in fact, we can tell it that that's the base layer. And that's good. And then we click on save. And then we want to create a map view. Feature Analyzer changed uh, relatively recently. Um, and now it's using the Luciad uh, technology for um, Feature Analyzer, which makes it uh, a lot more customizable. Um, but in order for the Feature Analyzer to work, we need a map view. So we'll create a new map view there. We'll call it... We'll have it at 3857 and we'll add in our legend as well. Click apply, click the preview on, and then we can set the bounds uh, from the set that we want to use. And that's good to see as well. Just a quick check that uh, all the points have come in there. Don't worry, they look quite blobby, but we'll be styling those later. And then we can select save for that. And then we can publish that uh, map view as well. This will take a, another couple of seconds uh, to do. Oh, it's too quick. And we can see at the top here, we've got uh, different flavors of Mac Enterprise apps that we can use, desktop, mobile. Uh, we're concentrating on the browser. And here we have analyzer views, which are a special subset of uh, the browser views. And we'll create a new one. And guess what we're going to call this? Okay, and then we can click on the button there to actually launch the feature analyzer. And this is where we can specify the map view that we want to use, which is going to be there. And then we can specify the layer that we want to use from that legend that we wish to use as the analyzer layer. And we can click on that and click on apply. And then that brings it all into the feature analyzer view. Click on that and click on save, view to save successfully. And then in the second video, I'm going to be showing you how we can style and uh, customize the view here to produce uh, a useful um, uh, browser tool for the end user. Okay, hope that's useful so far. Um, look forward to seeing you again soon for part two of this video. But in the meantime, um, that's all from me.